Shutting down the garden is not simply just turning the lights off. There are some steps you want to take to ensure weeds, disease, and pests are not your visitors next year as well. So here they are. If you don't know who I am, my name is Ashley. I have a bachelor's of science in soil science, and I've been gardening for my entire life, meaning I've pretty much tried to garden in every season possible and in every possible circumstance. <laughs> so before we jump into officially tucking in your entire garden, I want to thank today's sponsor, Brilliant. Now, if you've hung around this channel long enough, Geek Crew, you know that I love science. However, it doesn't have to be complicated. That is where Brilliant comes in. It's a hands-on learning platform where you get to play games to help you become a better interpreter of science or literally a number of other different things. Computer science, math, and even logic skills. And I use this and I've even seen an improvement in being able to decipher a lot of the information I take from the world of journals and utilizing it or making it make sense for just your average person who doesn't want to invest that much time into it, which I don't blame you. The coolest part is that these are not just slides you flip through. It is literal video games. So for us as gardeners, it helps us with reading information, myth busting information that we're given, and ultimately helping us garden better while using science. So if you've ever wanted to understand the why behind gardening in Canada, then Brilliant is definitely the app you want to download. And several Geek Crew members have gotten their children sign up on it, and they said that their kids love it, and they love it equally as much. So it's not just me saying it. To learn for free on Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash gardening in Canada. Scan the QR code on the screen or click the link in the description. Brilliant's also giving our viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription. This gives you unlimited access daily to everything on Brilliant. Thank you, Brilliant, for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back into ensuring that your garden does not turn into a bulb graveyard by spring. Now, number one, of course, seems incredibly obvious, and that involves removing the plant debris. But in the circumstances of wanting to plant, we actually want to remove as much debris as possible. A few reasons for this. Number one is that pests are definitely going to overwinter in this good guys and bad guys, unfortunately, as well as disease. In particular, things like sclerotinia and fusarium wilt love to overwinter in plant debris. This was shown by the University of Minnesota. And essentially, the removal of this, whether you choose to compost it or not, is going to give you a leg up. Not to mention the fact that it also is going to get rid of weed seeds. No one likes weed seeds unless you're a masochist, then, or is a sadist. I don't know which one, whichever one it is, unless you're one of those two anyways. Now, if you're too lazy to clear the bed, congratulations, at least you've opened a bed and breakfast for the fun guys of the world. So it might be a party, who knows? Totally up to you. Now in horticulture science, actually in 2008, they did look at raised beds and the temperature differences between the outside of a raised bed and the inside of a raised bed based on cooler temps. Now, this does not stand for the dead of the summer totally different scenario. But if we're talking cool climates and cold, the outside of your bed, particularly that first two to three inches, is somewhere around five to 10 degrees Celsius cooler than the middle of your garden bed. So what this means is if you're going to do any sort of bulbs, root crops, anything that is essentially below ground level, whether it's planting for the spring or planting for the fall winter, is not or is less likely to survive due to that cooler temp. The best way to kind of look at a raised bed is that it is the equivalent of camping in a tent. You camp in the tent and it tends to be cooler than if you were to dig a hole. For anyone who does backpacking, you know that if you dig a hole and you sleep lower in the ground, it tends to be a little bit warmer. Same with igloos. That's why Canadians live in igloos for the most part. What this doesn't hold true for is anything that is growing above ground. So if we're doing Swiss char, spinach, kale, we don't have to worry about it. It also doesn't stand for the seeds we want to plant in fall to show up in the spring. And we will do a whole separate video on that because that is a whole topic unto itself. Because yes, you can start seeds 
in fall for zone three. Now say you're living in the world of raised beds and you don't just want to plant all your garlics and tulip bulbs in the center of the bed. There are some ways to navigate this. Number one way to navigate this is actually by using some sort of insulator such as straw or mulch or piling leaves up around the sides of the raised bed or you could actually pack the bed in with snow as it falls. The best way to explain what's happening in that case is that your raised bed went from this wide and that much to plant to this wide because of that new buffer you've placed and you can plant closer to those edges, but it has to be packed in nice and close. Okay, for soil prep, this is actually kind of unique in a few ways. So there's a couple options we can do here. For example, if we're dealing with compact soil and we're trying to alleviate said compaction, what we wanna do is actually snip the plants off at the base. Now we only want to snip the plants off at the base and at soil level if the plant leaves have some sort of disease or pest issue from this summer. If there hasn't been any pests and there hasn't been any issues, we actually want to leave the entire plant in place. Now the reason for that is because the roots are going to help with that compaction via feeding microbes and kind of making little fissures or channels similar to what an ant would do, but on a root level in your soil. And the rest of the plant is actually going to act as a snow capture. Now, this isn't something I've seen in horticulture journals. It's not something that I've heard other influencers speak about. However, the idea and where I came up with this was from the fact that in the farming world, there is a new sort of header out there. And the header actually removes just the heads of the wheat or the rye or the barley or whatever the crop may be. And then it leaves the sticks in place. And the reason for why that stubble is left in place is solely for snow capture. So we have something even more superior to just this tiny little wheat shaft. We have a big shaft, if you will. And in this case, it's sunflowers. It could be your tomatoes. There's a number of different ones, but I would leave those in place if you have no issues. So the next thing to actually consider is things like cover crops. Now, cover crops I've done an entire video on, so I encourage you to go check that out. But essentially, if you believe that your soil in particular is suffering from some form of erosion, whether that's runoff in the spring, whether that's uh, shoveling of snow, whether it's wind because things will dry out through the winter and it will be blown away. Whatever the case is, you may want to consider a cover crop. That's probably the best scenario for a cover crop. And there are so many different options. But like I said, I have other videos on that. So if you want more of an in-depth view, I would actually go check those out. So the next one, if we have disease issues, if we have pest issues, if we have weed issues, the best thing you can do hands down is remove the plants by cutting off at the base. And this is only true if you don't have some sort of root issue. If you have a nematode root issue, if you've got like some sort of root rot scenario, then I would remove them. Holy shit, I just realized I have a freaking I have a loofah. I have a loofah on my plant. I have two loofahs. Wow, I do not pay attention to my garden at all, ever. Holy shit. I should probably water that. That's impressive. It's huge. Oh my God. This is a genuine reaction right now. This is Ashley excited. My dry humor passes over into my excitement as well. I am elated. I am elated right now. Absolutely stoked. Okay, well, I did it folks. I didn't realize I did it till now. You're, I'm gonna show you the size of this thing. I'll show you the size of my loofah, if you will. And you're gonna laugh at me because you're gonna be like, how the fuck did you not notice that, bitch? I, I work, I'm a hard worker. Just not in my garden, apparently. Jesus Christ, Ashley, that's pretty bad. Anyways, bare soil, where was I at? Okay, if you have any sort of disease issue that is not, so if you have like a, a blight in your potatoes, then I would remove said potatoes in particular. That's the one that like off the top of my head comes to me. So if you have, a potato blight, you need to remove the potato tubers from the soil. Otherwise, cut everything off at the base and then you want to have bare soil. So we don't want mulch, we don't want anything. We want literal black earth and then we want to put a 
solarization cover on it. So this will be a clear poly of some sort and we want it as close to the soil surface as possible. So we want to use things like rocks or bricks or soil to actually, or two by fours, whatever the case is, you know, your husband, if you need to dispose of him, just put it kind of on top to hold that poly in place and then it will, via heat, actually solarize it. It's going to solarize it until the snow flies and then it's going to solarize it again in the spring. What it's going to do is it's going to kill off weed seeds, disease, pests, the good guys. I always have to say that because I think people oftentimes when it comes to organic methods think that it is biased or it is like selective in some way. It is not selective, it's killing off everything. Do not do this. If you have bulbs or seeds planted that you want to come up next spring, if you have perennials, do not do this. But if you have just a regular old garden and you got issues you need to get rid of, solarization is your friend. Please, I got a whole video on it. Go check it out. You will love it. Plus you get into the actual garden much sooner. So this one's more for maybe advanced gardeners or people who are very interested in the whole world of seed saving. Now the reason for why you would want to save seeds actually comes from the fact that it's grown in your climate. So the fact that these plants have bloomed and been successful in your climate means that they are selectively choosing those as like the offspring to make it. So if you want to help push evolution, I guess you could say, in your direction, then you want to collect anything that bloomed or appears the way you like it. So don't just like take whatever you want off the crop, be selective. So get the biggest head sunflowers or the prettiest sunflowers, the ones with the greatest color, uh, the biggest producing tomatoes, the plant that produced tomatoes first, whatever it's the loofah grab the loofah seeds that sort of thing is what we want to aim for now one that is unique and i will say it takes a little bit of practice it took me years to be able to do it properly but that is actually seed saving from biannual crops such as beets and carrots so radishes we know will bolt in the summer and lettuce will bolt in the summer and we can remove those seeds well I don't know if you knew this, but carrots and beets will do the same. I'll insert some footage of what a carrot flower looks like. Essentially, all we want to do is leave them in place, insulate them with mulch, and next year, leave them in place again, let them grow, flower, and then harvest said seeds. This is going to give you seeds for a crop that you normally would not be able to retrieve seeds from. You don't need to leave a lot in, you only need to leave a few because they produce a ton of seeds. So definitely something to think about. Plus the flowers on carrots, chef's kiss are absolutely beautiful. If you have giggled at least once in this video, be sure to hit the hype button below. I know it's weird, it's called the hype button or hit the subscribe button. The Geek Crew would love to adopt you because that's what we do is adopt the un unadoptable. I'm a redhead, so, you know, redheaded stepchild scenario, but you can just be with me. I almost died on the hose right there. So there you have it. Clearing, insulating, and just soil prep in general are going to be your tasks for wintering your garden. If you want to learn more about how to use your garden as a refrigerator and what plants to choose to use your garden as a refrigerator well into the winter months, then you're going to want to check out this video right here. Anyways, Geek Crew, I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.